and welcome to a uh, two-part tutorial on how to do the A4 financial lit assignment. This is an assignment done in Google Sheets. We can see the title page here. This is what loads once you find the assignment in Schoology and uh, some very basics before we go over anything else. For those that haven't used spreadsheets before, we have uh, these vertical columns represented by letters and we have these horizontal rows represented by numbers where we click on a box we can identify that box as box b1 or a fancy name for that is a cell again if we went over here we could say to somebody that that is cell d2 because it's in column d and row 2. we can also see that there's some tabs here along the bottom we have the tab for the title screen we have the tab for the shopping spree and we have the tab for the baseball part of the assignment. We're going to focus today on the shopping spree side of things. Here you can see I have a partially filled out um, version of this. Your goal again is to spend $1,000 on 10 to 15 items. As many quantity as those items as you want, but it has to be 10 to 15 unique items. So in other words, we're going to Amazon and we're trying to plug in. Um, so we have anywhere from 10 items, which would be row 11, to uh, 15 items, which would be row 16. That's because of our title column or row here at the start. Um, so this one's partially filled out and we'll go through some examples of how to do this. Just some basic rules. You can't buy gift cards with your gift card. And of course you can't just buy one item that checks out exactly at a thousand because you need 10 to 15 different items. We are trying to use every last cent of the thousand dollar gift card that we're given and it's going to make it a lot easier to use spreadsheets to do this so that we don't waste any money on our gift card. So here you can see when you first load up this assignment, you're given two products by default. You're given the Apple AirPods and the Jolly Ranchers. The Apple AirPods are originally $179, at least when I checked Amazon. Um, it's very likely to change, but um, it, it only matters at the time that you do the shopping. Uh, I did make a little picture of it, a screenshot of it, and you can see the 179 is coming from this area down here. That is the list price. It's not the price we're paying. It's the original price of the item. The other number that's not crossed out and it's larger in text, that's why it says it says larger price up here, but what that means is like the larger text. Um, that is the sale price. That is what we're concerned with because that's the price we're paying. And you can see here in column D, that's where the 159.16 went. So, so far, when you're doing this assignment, all you would do is put the name of the item in column A. You'd put the original price in column B. You actually don't have to do anything in column C. There's already a formula that's going to help you there. You can see it's telling me I saved 11%, and that is because it's taking a look at the relationship between the sale price, which is in column D, and the list price, which is in column B. You can see over here again, Amazon on our screenshot is saying that we saved 11%, so that seems accurate on both sides. Our quantities in column E, and that's how many of the item we're going to get. And finally, our item total is the total after the quantity is taken into consideration. So for example, if I try to get 10 of these AirPods and I press enter, you can see that the computer automatically adjusted the item total to what that would cost us. Now, in this case, that's way too much. We only have $1,000 to spend. So we're going to change that back to a number one because uh, that's all we're going to be able to afford. Okay. Um, you also have the Jolly Rancher lollipops on your uh, example. And again, you can replace these if you want. They're just something there to get you started. The 1139 was the original price of that, and it wasn't on sale when I checked. So that means we are saving 0%, which is fine. Try to get some of your items on sale, but they don't all have to be on sale. Um, and again, the quantity one for now, and there's our item total, okay? So again, either keep those items or replace them up to you. Sometimes it's handy to have a couple to get started with. Now I started to go out and find some other items too here. So I got my uh, three player chess. If we take that and we click on it, we can see that we're going to that. This is called a hyperlink. And the three-person chess is $78.89, and it's not on sale. There's only one price. So again, if you wanted that, you would um, put the $78.89 in both spots, both column B and column D. It would tell us that we're saving nothing on that. Okay. Um, 
I'll show you uh, one more item just so you kind of know how to hyperlink things. So here's a softball bat that I was considering. It is $388. There is no sale on that. So when we go back to that, we put the 388 in both spots. It's telling us we saved zero. Now the rest of these items are just kind of fake items just to show you how this assignment would work. You're gonna fill it out with real items. Okay, so I wanna show you how to hyperlink this so that I can see uh, where you're getting the item from. We're gonna to go to the item. We're gonna click on the URL at the top. That's the Uniform Resource Locator, the specific spot of that item on the internet. We're gonna press Control C if you're on a PC, Command C if you're on a Mac to copy it. We're gonna go back. Now here's the thing, you kinda of have to click off of the area for a second and then you're gonna right click back on the thing that you wanna make the hyperlink. So we're just kind of clicking anywhere and then we're right clicking back on that. We're gonna say insert link and we're gonna do control V or command V depending on if you're a PC or Mac and we're gonna apply that. So what that's gonna do now is anytime somebody clicks on that and then clicks on the link, it'll take them to that item on the internet. So that's a really handy skill to know, not just for this assignment, but just uh, you might be doing Google Docs in the future that you need to link something and now you have an idea how to make that happen. Okay, next most important thing is to look down here at cell B17. Again, those that have played Battleship before can kind of understand better what um, we're doing there. B17 is this cell, and it's already got a formula in it that's going to help us out. So you can see that my total right now says 693.93, and that is my subtotal. Subtotals mean your total before tax and we haven't factored in tax to this and we do need to. Um, we're not gonna factor in shipping. We're gonna assume that shipping is free, but tax obviously is something we need to pay. Um, so tax in Ontario is 13%. That's gonna be a significant amount of money when you're talking about $1,000. So we'll see how that factors in. Let's actually try to uh, figure out what the tax would be right now. So you'd wanna put your cursor in B18. Cell B18 is gonna be the tax only and we start all equations on a computer with an equal sign. So we're gonna type equal sign, and then we're gonna click on the thing above it. So we're not gonna use the number of whatever's there, and you're gonna have a different number than me, but we're not gonna I'm not gonna use the 69393 because I know that number is gonna change. Instead, I'm gonna use the placeholder for it or the variable of B17. So all I did so far was click on B17. Now I'm gonna multiply, which is an asterisk, or a star, it looks like a star, it's on your number pad on the right side of your keyboard. It's also shift eight. So I've got equal sign B17 times 0 0.13, or you could even do 13 with the percent sign. Either will work because they're the same thing. It's giving me a preview of 9021. I'm gonna ask myself now, does that make sense? Well, you got $13 on every 100, in this case, I spent almost $700. So just by a mental estimation, the 9021 makes sense to me. So I'm gonna press enter. And now uh, I end up in cell B19. And B19 is the most important cell on this assignment. That is where we find the grand total. The grand total is the total after tax. So we are gonna say equal sign. We're gonna click on B17, which is our subtotal. And in this case, we're gonna add our tax, again, we're not choosing the numbers because the numbers are gonna change. We're choosing the place that the numbers are in. In this case, it's B18. And I ask myself mentally, does that make sense? 784, if I added 693 and 90, it does. So I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna get my grand total. So this number in cell B19 is your most important cell. Uh, that is the one you're trying to get as close to $1,000 as possible. Now, just to give you a couple hints on how to get closer to a thousand, let's say you have your 10 items um, and let's say you can actually get there without adding more items if you want to. Remember that we have the quantities over here. So for example, I can get a lot closer to a thousand if I get two of those. Could I even get three of those? Maybe. Oh, yeah, and now I'm really close at 962. And this is the beauty of this assignment. We've basically coded the Amazon shopping cart to adjust the calculations as we adjust the quantities. So we're getting the computer to do a lot of the math for us at this point. I'm gonna see if I can get three of those. Now I'm getting really close. I'm gonna see if I can get two of these. Okay, 996.31. 
and again um, just going through and adjusting the quantities you see I'm getting closer and closer to a thousand so that's one way you can do this I'll give you a hint it helps a lot to have a very inexpensive item that'll help you get to a thousand so I'll leave you with that part for now um, I'm not gonna put it exactly at a thousand because I want you to think a little bit about how that might be done okay so if you think about the instructions down here we just did step number one uh, finding 10 to 15 items to get to a thousand okay uh, the second one is make a pie chart showing how you spent your money so let's do that really quickly all we need for the pie chart and again I wouldn't do this until I got this number to a thousand but just for the sake of this tutorial I'm not gonna take it all the way there um, also keep in mind that if you tried to go over budget like that and you get to a thousand over a thousand that's definitely not gonna work the uh, Amazon computer algorithm is going to say false, you don't have enough money, and you'll get nothing. So just make sure that this number doesn't go over a thousand. Okay, now how to do the pie chart? Um, it would be easy if we wanted to select all of this and make our pie chart, because we could just do that and hit the chart button, uh, which is up here on your toolbar. The problem is we're comparing a lot of different things percents and numbers and small numbers and big numbers and it's not going to make a very nice looking graph in fact if I do that just so you can kind of see that graph doesn't mean much of anything there's way too much going on so we have to figure out what makes the most sense how could we display how we spent our money well the first thing we'd want is the item name so I'm gonna go ahead and just select those so that they turn blue I did that just by clicking left clicking and dragging the mouse now if I try to select the matching amounts that I spent on each one you see that the problem is I lost my original titles so let's try that again I'm gonna select that this time I'm gonna hold the control button on a PC or the command button on a Mac and I'm going not gonna let go until I have matching values so now you can see I have these matching exactly with these and now I can go ahead and hit my chart tool and I get something that makes a lot more sense the computer picked the scale of the graph going up by a hundred at a time the computer automatically put my items here um, I am going to change it from a column chart to a pie chart just for the sake of this I think you could justify leaving it as a column or a bar graph or something like that I like the pie in this case because it does very much show what does your total look like if this pie were was your thousand dollars and I think it's very visual now that this softball bat is going to cost me a lot of money. The three-player chess is a fair amount of money compared to the rest of the things, the Apple AirPods and so on. So I think it's a very good visual. Um, some people go in and play around with the 3D stuff too, which is certainly something you can look at. That, that one looks nice too and does the same thing, just a little bit different effect. Okay, finally, since we don't have axes on a pie chart, um, we can just give it a title. So I'm going to customize chart and axis titles and I'm going to give it a better title because right now that's not a title that means a whole lot. I'm going to say how I spent my thousand dollars at Amazon. And you could give it something a little bit different if you wanted to as long as it makes sense. I'm going to make this text blue so it stands out. I'm going to center it okay you could change the font size make it a little bit bigger again try to make your title pop out all right and that's basically it for the graph so we can just click on the graph at this point you don't really need the airpods so you can either just kind of cover it or you can delete the airpods altogether and put it in that spot okay so that was number two and now we're on to the final things which are answering these questions these are kind of level four questions here that you can get some extra credit for uh, question one says, can you figure out how much you saved on average? What is the average of the column C? Put your answer in C20. So we're going to C20, and up until now, we haven't really bothered with um, column C at all. But column C was telling us how much we save, basically how good of a shopper we are. And you can see, like, a lot of my items I didn't get any sales on. Um, a couple, three of them I did. I'm going to figure out what the average amount that I saved was. And we're gonna write that rate in cell C20. Okay, so uh, if you think about how you find the average of something, you're gonna add them all together and then divide by the number of items, okay? So I could do something like equal sign, and I could say uh, C2 plus 
C3 plus C4, going all the way down to C11. And then as long as I put all those in brackets and I divide, which again, if you look at your number pad, you've got a slash for divide by the number of items, which in my case is 10 items. So if I did that where I added these all together um, and I divide by 10, if you think about order of operations, then that would make sense. And that's a great way to do it. So I encourage you to do it that way if you want to. If you want to see another trick here, um, I can show you another way too. So for example, if we don't do it this way, the computer actually knows what the word average is. So if I say equal sign average, I can then open my brackets and just select the range. So if I just kind of click and drag, it's going to automatically know now that I want the average of C2 to C11. Now I'm going to close my brackets and I'm going to press enter and you can see that it says I saved 10%. I'm asking myself, is that likely? I think that is likely correct. I did have a 60% savings, but I also had a whole bunch of zeros. So ending up somewhere like 10 makes sense in my head. Okay. Um, the next one, can you figure out a second way to find the grand total? And we're going to put that into B20. So that is here. And you can see for this one, um, we have one way of getting the grand total was to add the subtotal and the tax. It says hint, you can multiply the subtotal by 1.13. So there we go. Equal sign. We can take the subtotal. We can multiply it, which is the asterisk. This time, not by 0.13 to get the tax, but by 1.13 to get the total after tax. Kind of keeps what it already has and gives you the tax as well. Two different ways to find the grand total. Um, the next one says, why is the pie chart the best graph choice here? I kind of gave you some hints on that already. It was uh, a very visual way to see how you spent the $1,000. To answer that the way you'd like to, you just double click in the box and then type your answer in a color uh, like dark blue or something. So I'll see your answer there really easily and then press save and close. And we're on to our last part of part A with the shopping spree. Um, can you find the mean, median, and mode of the item cost? Put your answers in J2, 3, and 4. Okay, so column J was hiding on us. It's way over here. We can see that there is a place for this. And we're trying to find the mean, the median, mode of column F, basically. Not including the zeros. If you want, you can go ahead and delete those just so you're not confused by them. They're not real items. If you have extra zeros, get rid of whatever is there. Um, okay. So the mean is your average. What was the average that we spent per item? Okay, so we've done that before uh, in column C. So we're gonna say equal sign the average. Average is the same thing as the mean. And then we're gonna select our range. F2 to F11, close the brackets, press enter. And I get an average price of 88.47. By estimation, because I have some expensive items and I have some cheap ones, that looks pretty good to me. Median is the amount kind of in the middle. Now I have 10 items, so if I line my items up from lowest to highest, it wouldn't be an exact middle. But um, in that case, the median is kind of the average of the two closest to the middle. And so let's take a look at what that would be. Equal sign, the median, open brackets. And again, the computer is going to do the work for us by lining these up from lowest to highest and it's telling me that my median item costs $24.99. Uh, that would kind of be the middle value. And if I look around here at like what I expect would be the middle items, which would be probably these, uh, again, that makes sense to me. And finally, the mode, if I say equal sign the mode, this is the item that appears the most often. So the number that appears the most often, if I select my range and I close my brackets, it's gonna say hashtag NA. Now hashtag is something the computer does when it doesn't get what you're trying to do. If we read the error message, it says mode cannot produce a result. No values occur more than once. And that makes sense. I do not have a value here that appears more than once. So in my case, I have no mode. You may or may not have a mode. Let's say you had two $5 items, then you would. Um, but most of the time people aren't gonna have a mode and you can just leave it at NA. 
So that is basically the end of the uh, assignment for the shopping spree. You're trying to get as close to $1,000 here as you can without going over. Hope you had fun and learned a lot about graphing and equations and uh, how to budget. And we'll go on next time into the Blue Jays part of things, how to be the Blue Jays GM. All right, see you then. Thanks now. Bye.